Secure Ninja is in London at InfoSecurity Europe. We're in the world famous British Museum and I'm in front of the world famous Rosetta Stone. The Rosetta Stone was the key to unlocking the secrets of the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic language. Speaking about keys, let's catch up with our friends at Yubico and talk about the changes to the YubiKey range. Secure Ninja. Hi everyone, it's Andrew from Secure Ninja TV again, and I'm here today with Per Engard from Yubico, and of course Yubico are best known for creating the YubiKey. Thanks for joining us, Per. Do you want to refresh our audience and tell us a little bit about the YubiKey, please? Yeah, so I could say the YubiKey is the Swiss army knife of authentication. Uh, we have a lot of uh, different things, so we support FIDO, we support PEV, TUTP, some of the keys are just doing parts of it and the other ones are doing all. So the five series key is doing all of this, like the butcher slide we have here. Okay, yeah, excellent. So you need to know what protocols you need to have supported on device and then make your selection based on that. The consumer ones, uh, the, the let's say least expensive ones, all support FIDO2 and then uh, the more enterprise grade will support more protocols. Is yes. that fair to say? That is correct. Excellent. Now these keys, these hardware keys are considered in the security realm more secure than something like an authenticator app. Um, they're more phishing resistant. Do you want to explain why that might be so? Yeah, so you have a pin that you use to unlock the key. You don't send anything over internet, so the password, the username, that doesn't go over, over internet. And then it's built in to be secure for just one side. You have a unique private key that is used for that specific site, and that's connecting with the phishing resistance. So it's just an easy way to let the computer decide if this is phishing or not, instead of a man. Excellent, so yeah, when we talk about time-based one-time pins, it's gonna generate a six-digit pin, which the user's generally going to input into a computer, and I guess that's a little bit more susceptible to some kind of a, a man-in-the-middle attack, whether it be technical, or it would be human engineering, something like that. Yeah, or social engineering or whatever. It is. Social engineering, absolutely, because uh, when we're using a hardware key, the consumer, the user, the human being doesn't know that six-digit um, one-time pin. It's all done underneath in the technology layer. Yeah, it's like a challenge that's it, done underneath. So yeah. You don't see it. Yeah. Excellent. So in Security Plus, we call it a chan chan shake yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Excellent. Um, now, of course, some people would argue the disadvantage of these hardware keys is that... Um, they're a little bit more complicated to use than an authenticator app, um, and it's not easy to, it's impossible to clone these devices. If you want a backup or redundant key, you have to um, have two keys and create the, the keys at the same time. You cannot clone the device, but actually that's more of a security feature yes. rather than a problem because an attacker cannot get a hold of your key for a short period of time and clone it. So yeah, there's this tension between user ease of use for redundancy and um, security. You've decided to go the security route. Would that be fair enough? Yeah, and that's for the registration. Then for authentication, it's quite, it's really, really simple to use. So the, the hurdle is the first step. The hurdle is the first step, absolutely. When you're creating those private keys at the first place, you have to do it. If you have two keys, you have to put the keys from the application on both keys at the same time. So a little bit more, more complex, but more security. Excellent. Um, so I see you have a couple of new products as well. Do you want to talk about some of the new products that you guys have released, please? Yeah, so, so one of the products is this, the YubiKey Bio. It's also a FIDO security key, but the difference is that you only use your PIN when you register in the fingerprint. And then after that, you're using the fingerprint to authenticate. So it's really, really easy for the user to use. Oh, excellent. So yeah, just a simple biometric scan, and you get authenticated to the site. So easy use for that one, absolutely for sure. And then you have a few uh, other keys as well. Do you want to explain those to us, yeah, please? So so this is just uh, the security keys that we had. The blue one was the one we had before, and we now made, made it black. Okay. So all of our YubiKeys are black nowadays. Okay. Uh, and then we also have added an additional one, which we call the enterprise security key for enterprises. And the big difference there is that you also have a serial number on that one, because you don't have that on the normal security keys. And that is maybe easier for the enterprises to track 
users and which key they get and, and why they use it. So, and if they lose it or something. Okay, better for inventory control. Yes. Okay, that makes a hell of a lot of sense. Um, here, thanks so much for talking to us. It's been a little while, but I'm looking forward to catching up with you guys again in the future. Thanks for talking to Secure Ninja TV. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe and to like because we have a lot more content coming from London. I'm Andrew Howard from Secure Ninja TV. We'll talk to you again soon.